Bonjour, bonsoir, buenas dias, buenas noches. Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Today we're going to be reviewing baddies. All right, I haven't abandoned y'all. It's just there was stuff going on. I was on vacation and all that stuff, so I'm back, and we're doing this. I'm being back on it, but you know it is the summer, so. But anyways, um, so yeah, here goes Tommy. All right, she was over here riding on a white horse like knight in shining armor i don't know what the hell she was doing but she came with an entrance okay she said y'all gonna remember this entrance right here and come to find out it was actually biggie that invited her i was like why would you set this up like are you trying but then again just looking back at all the seasons biggie has been messy in her own right you know she doesn't do it to the point where people like point fingers at her too much but she does do a lot of little baby messy stuff and she has in the past but so now Gretchen she was still ready to fight so before anything was popping off with Tommy and Natalie because you know they was they was on that time in um it was Gretchen is like you know she wanted to talk to Jayla so her and Jayla is there having a conversation or whatever she's trying to like She's trying to really like apologize and just let them know that, you know, at the end of the day, she is Puerto Rican. You know, and she said, like, when they asked her, like, are you Puerto Rican and black? She's like, no, I'm just full Puerto Rican. So right there, that was the part that was the problem, you know? So then she's talking to everybody. She was trying to actually, before she even apologized, she was trying to gain sympathy from Tommy because Tommy had went over by her just to kind of see why she was being like the public enemy number one right now. So she was telling Tommy like how she's full Puerto Rican and things like that. And then Tommy was kind of like, mm, nah. And like, Tommy wasn't feeling it neither. I'm like, dang, like ain't none of them jacking it. Like ain't none of them with it. They are like, yeah, you can't say that word. Like they're just like banning her from it. Like I said, like just me being somebody who's from the Bronx, even though I don't condone anyone at all, if you're black, white, Hispanic, like anybody really saying it, because I just feel like it's a derogatory term that we shouldn't be calling ourselves. But um, I see the whole Puerto Rican thing because out in the hood out here, Puerto Ricans be saying stuff like that all the time. It's like once you've grown up around this, this type of people, you're all from the same place, they all say it. And that's just what it is. It's just like they use it as though they're saying like dude or bro. Like, yo, that's my bro right there. That's my, you know, that's just how it's kind of used. But it is what it is. I guess everybody has their own feelings. I've heard other black people say things like that. Like they don't want Hispanic people saying it. But not, I haven't really heard anybody in this area. Like upstate, I've been upstate before. And I've heard some of those people up there say things like that. But I don't know, I, maybe in the hood, it's just like a different vibe. Maybe it just depends on where you grew up, who you hung out with or whatever that allows you to say certain things. So anyways, Natalie ends up going after Tommy and Tommy was literally dragging her in the sand. Like she pulled off her wig. It was just crazy. And Tommy, I was like, damn, like, girl, you, you, you ready. You coming with the heat. Okay, um, yeah, there was blood on Tommy's face. I was like, you know, like when they pulled him apart, I was like, damn, like they really both going at it. Like it was first I thought Tommy was doing the big one, you know, but then it looked like both of them was really getting at it. So I was like, damn. And Tommy didn't want to stop, but Natalie was just like, you know what, I'm done. And then she just kind of like walked towards her car. She was like, I'm over it. Like, we could do this another day. I'm like, girl, you know, you're tired. That's the reason why you're retreating right now. You're trying to talk big while you're walking away. But at the end of the day, you just don't want to do this anymore because you're tired. Okay. You know, we at that age where it's like, nobody don't want to fight for hours. Like, <laughs> this ain't a championship match or something like that. And so then they started their banter again, going back and forth. Natalie was, you know, kind of taunting her. I was just like, but she was still kind of keeping her distance. Tommy looked like she was ready to get down again. Like she was, she was on like, all right, we going to do this. Let's do this. Yo. So when they showed Tommy's face, cause they ended up going again. Like Tommy's face was actually looking bad for real. I was like, damn. I was like, yo, Natalie really like, she been on her, her stuff with her trainer or whatever she was doing. Cause I know 
you know, she did good with the match. So I was wondering why she wasn't doing so good here. But I'm like, maybe because it's like throwing hands. But not at the end of the day, like she she really like came back and she came back on top. Tommy said that because they came over by the car and they was like, she tried to corner Natalie in the car and kind of get her, you know, in a vulnerable position. But I guess the security guards, at the end of the day, they work for Natalie. You know what I'm saying? Like, Natalie's the producer. They're going to make sure that Natalie is good. I don't know if Tommy still has producer credits or whatever, because I remember she did when she was on that season. But I highly doubt she does at this point, unless, you know, she went above Natalie. So they're going to protect Natalie at all costs. You know what I mean? Like, if they see Natalie's getting hurt, I'm pretty sure they're going to pull things apart or they're going to make sure, like, so she was like, yo, you you held my hand? So I guess somebody was, like, holding Tommy's hand while Natalie was there, like, getting them uppercuts in, you know? So she could have paid some money on the side. She could have had a little chat with the security, like, yo, if she comes up in here, y'all better make sure I don't get beat up. You know, if she pro- I could imagine her having that secret conversation in the back room. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I could just imagine. And, you know, obviously she's their boss, so they have to comply. Uh-huh. They give it a little something, but if they see things ain't looking right, but yo, Natalie went in, though, because even her knuckles was bloody. It looked like Tommy's face was bloody. Like, she didn't want to be seen on camera. Like, she was over it at that point. She walked away that time. She wasn't even trying to come back after that. That was because she was giving her the uppercuts, like, like, them boxing moves. She brought it back. Like, that's how you got to get her, because... She's, I don't believe that Tommy's like formally trained. She's hood, you know, she's a hood fighter. So that's a difference, a hood fighter between a, you know, an actual trained fighter. Like it's a difference. Like you will get beat up. But that's like somebody from the hood fighting a ninja. Like you're not going to win. You know what I mean? Like, because you don't have the same types of moves, you know? And you, you're not, you don't know what to do to block them because it's not the same as somebody who's just, you know, like, yeah you know, just like a regular hood person. Anyways, so Aubrey, uh, she, she was talking to Natalie. No, she was talking in like the commentary. She was saying, well, it looks like Natalie was upset that she was coming in the show, you know, in a big way, coming in so big on the show that was Natalie's, you know, kind of like Natalie's platform and she's coming in so grand and big. It wasn't even that, girl. Like, there's so much more to the story. Like, did you watch the season? Did you watch the the whole fight that they had? It's like, she don't really know what's going on for real. Like, girl, just stay in your happy place. Because, <laughs> you know, I don't even know why they got this girl doing a commentary. Like, she's getting paid to do nothing. <laughs> well, whatever. Sometimes it's kind of funny, though. I can't even lie. Because she just seems so clueless at times. Anyway, so... Biggie had the nerve to tell the other girls, let's go check on Natalie. And I'm like, did she just say that? She was the one who conjured all this up. Like, what you talk about, let's go check on Natalie. Like, that was so fake to me. Now, Tzatziki was arguing with one of the newer wannabe replacement girls. I don't even remember the girl name, to be honest. But she was arguing with her because she said she was standing next to her man when they did that, you know, that while and now baddies versus um what was it baddies versus the cabaret girls or whatever they was doing i guess the girl was standing too close to her man so she held on to that and the girl said that she apologized and said she was drunk but she was like nah like she brought it back up and was ready to take her down i'm like you really fighting over a dude like is it that serious like if nothing happened what like come on and like what are you doing to Ziki? come on girl you better than that like you just want a reason to fight this girl you probably just don't like her for real and you've seen that she's easy target because you've seen her get beat up and bloodied already so you like all right i could take her for real but they was they was arguing a little bit back and forth the girl was getting a little loud but luckily mariah lynn saved the day by hitting her in the back of her head because i feel like if mariah lynn didn't hit her i feel like if Tzatziki would have hit her, it would have been a lot worse. So it was almost like the calm before the storm. Like, she got them licks in, and then they took her back to her truck. So that saved her from actually having to be confronted by Tzatziki, because Tzatziki's like a grizzly bear. Like, she is going to take you down, down. Like, I don't think, we haven't seen Tzatziki lose anything yet, and every time she throws hands, like, it's on some next level stuff. 
Like when she was fighting that other chick, I forgot her name. Um, I don't know what I'm talking about. The one who pushed Natalie off the chair. I'm, I'm, I'll be having a brain fart, y'all. But y'all know who I'm talking about. When she had a fight with her, like they was both actually pretty damn good. Like I was like, okay. She gave her a run for her money, but she still got beat up though. <laughs> she still got beat up. <laughs> um, now Scotland, she ended up bringing Diamond and Tinker together, but that was like a waste because their conversation. Tinker said that she tried to let it go, but Diamond did things like do raps about her. She she was like doing the most online, and she's like she's doing the most, and it seemed like she's just clout chasing at this point. That's what it's given to me. She remind me of that girl from like season two. Was it Baddies East? The one with Jayla. I'm so bad with names, y'all. But I remember there was a girl like that. She ended up changing her name during the reunion. She went back to her original name, which I think was like Ashley or something like that. But anyway, she's neither here nor there. But she like it kind of reminded me of her because I felt like she was also doing the most. Like some of these girls, like you could see like. They're just doing anything to try to, like, get their name out there. And it's like, damn, well, you it's giving desperate, baby. <laughs> it's giving desperate. Um, so, yeah, Diamond, she tells Tinka that she did her a favor. She got her on the show. I mean, I see where she's coming from because if she didn't pick her, then Tinka wouldn't have been able to beat her down and show her worth and show that she ain't about to be punked by nobody, you know? But... It's like now you you dragging this this whole storyline like you're doing the most with it, and Tinka she just she's just kind of like not really trying to entertain it too much. You know, it's like she's still a little something saying things here and there, but she ain't really entertaining it like how I'm pretty sure Diamond one wants to. Diamond just wants to keep on fighting over and over and over again. It's like for what though? Like, what, why are we really fighting? Like just to fight? You know, it's just to get some moments of camera time. That's what it seems like. So. Yeah, Tinka, she's just, she's like, I'm good. And now she keeps on talking about um, Tinka's face and, you know, the bleaching. I mean, it's obvious. We all see that she had some reason she bleached her skin. I thought that from the beginning. I thought that she was either like, um, like perhaps like some type of ethnic person, like maybe African or uh, an actual person from the Caribbean, like maybe Jamaican or some other part of the Caribbean, because that's something that I've seen a lot of. Um, I remember, I think I told you guys this story. Like, I remember I seen somebody that I knew they were dark. And then like the next time I saw them, they were like, oh, they were lighter than me. I'm like, what? So I know how bleaching looks, you know? So I can definitely say it looks like, but you never know the story behind it. And she's talking about, well, she don't even love herself. Like, I don't know. It's just tearing people down even more. Like she could have self-esteem issues on the low or whatever. And now you're just bringing those things to the forefront. You're talking about her skin. And obviously she must have had some kind of issues with it, some kind of insecurities. And I don't know, like that's the one bad thing that I hate about these types of shows. I'm such an empathetic person that it's like, I do like the drama, but then it's like, I feel for people and I can feel their pain. I feel they're hurt. And I just know like, you know, regardless to what people put out there and they allow you to see, that doesn't mean that their hearts that inside are not hurting, are not heavy, are in pain. And it's like, I can feel the heaviness, but that's a whole nother story, y'all. Anyway, so the girls, they go like on a little nature walk and they got split, split up into different groups. There was this one woman named Wendelie and she's Dominican. And I liked her perspective because Aubrey said, you know, what do y'all think about Gretchen? Do you think that she's just like, you know, this bad person? That's not what she said, but I'm paraphrasing. Like this bad, evil person. And they and Wendelin was like, no. And I feel like it's because she can relate because she's probably had these types of issues. She said something like that. She's like, she's from the hood. She's from the Bronx. BX, stand up. That's what's up. And, you know, she was saying, she's she's made it loud and clear. Like, I'm a black Dominican. She was like, no, I'm not. I'm a black. I'm black. Like, so it's like, girl, are you one of those people that pick and choose? Like, oh, I'm Dominican. I know black. But then in the other light, you're like, I'm black, you know, when it's convenient. I don't know. But that's neither here nor there. She was trying to explain the whole thing that I explained to you guys as well about the whole Puerto Rican in the hood thing. And people allowed her to say it. And Aubrey and her little, you know, she, she acted like she was listening and content and everything like that. But then, like, 
in the commentary, she's like, well, I don't know if, I don't know, like that wouldn't rock in my era. I feel uncomfortable with this conversation. Nah, that's because you're white and you don't want anybody to think that you're racist or that you're okay with like a white person saying these types of things because you don't understand the culture. It's not in your era because I think her era is my era. It's about where you came from. It's about you're not part of the hood. You know what I mean? Like you might've hung out with black people, but it's not the same as when you grew up in like the trenches. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a whole different environment, mama. And that's what uh, Wendley was trying to explain. And she's like, I don't think that Gretchen is coming from a negative place, but it's funny because she's, she's kind of defending her to a certain light. But I feel like when everybody's coming at her, she's not saying anything. So it's like, you're not a friend at the end of the day because you just kind of sit back quiet like because you don't want the heat on you. You're trying to stay in there. She probably like, at the end of the day, like we're not friends for real, so I'm not going to defend you and start getting beat up too. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to be the next public enemy, the public enemy number two, like your sidekick or something like that. Then we got to fight everybody. But she can definitely understand. And I, I kind of wish that, you know, she would say that more because I, I too see... I see where people can get offended, but I also see and understand where she's coming from because I, I'm from where she's from. You know what I mean? Like, I get it. And for me, like I said, I don't think nobody should be saying it. So it is what it is. If y'all allow yourselves to say these types of things, then, I mean, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, so now one of the other groups that was walking in the, in the little nature walk was with Meeple, Jayla, Scotland, and some other people. I didn't write down everybody. But with this group, Meeple and, and Jayla started getting into it because Me Meeple addressed her like, yo, why is it that you was bullying my friend? You know what I'm saying? Like she's standing up for her friend because her and and this chick and Biggie just be kikiing it every day. Like they be there smoking their blunts, talking their they, they lala and all that stuff catching up on things they look like they actually close maybe because they have similar body types maybe they have similar interests but i mean it's good that biggie has somebody not like tommy because tommy's not her real friend but at least biggie has somebody who it actually seems like they care about her and would actually fight for her and speak up for her you know what i'm saying because she's not she stands up for herself but she's not a fighter for real like she just does what she has to do to survive she's more like in survival mode but she's not like oh yeah if I have to fight a, a, a grizzly bear, I'm going to pick her. Like, nah, I'm going to pick somebody like Jayla. I'm going to pick Natalie. I'm going to pick Tommy. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to pick Tzatziki. Those are the people that I'm going to, like, tag. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? Like, she'd probably be one of the last people I even think of. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. But Meepo was actually going up to Jayla like, yo, you thought you could bully her? Like, don't be bully. You only did that because you knew that you could beat her because she's not a fighter for real. She was like, how about you bully me? I was like, okay, Meepo, I see you, girl. Like, she's making it known. Like, I ain't scared of you. So I don't know how that's going to turn out, but that was pretty much the end of that episode. Damn, that was a lot. <laughs> it was a whole lot of drama. Not They haven't even really done anything productive yet. Like, they finally started... And here it goes left again. So I'm like, damn. And this is the same thing that Biggie was saying. Like, yo, we haven't even gotten to the bag yet. You know, like, and that's true. Like, y'all got to start doing hostings and stuff. But Natalie was saying they have to get the girls locked in first. Because they got so many girls. It's like, there's no way that anybody could even pay all these women. You know what I'm saying? So that's like another thing that you got to get settled. Like, she got all these people. I mean, I feel that it's good that she has all these people for one fact is that a lot of people were saying in previous shows, like, oh, you always pick the same people over and over again. They just keep on returning. Like, you're doing these auditions, but nobody actually gets put on the show. So it looks like she actually heard what people had to say, and she changed that. Even if it was, if it had to be revised where we got our, our you know, our oldies and, you know, our MVPs and whatever, and then we have are people that's trying to get in the show and we also have people that got on the show that we got the replacements that's ready to take their spot like she made it so more of these women can have a platform so at the end of the day like she's doing something that's really good if you look at the bigger picture you know what i mean like she's allowing these women to get airtime even if it's not for a long time if they're just there for a short time order they still get into be seen their little names are still getting put out there. So, you know, they got to put some respect on her name for real. Like, I know Natalie could be hard to 
deal with but at the end of the day i feel like she has a good heart and she's a good person who's trying to actually help people out even though she's helping herself but she's also helping these women out in the hindsight you know what i mean but that's that y'all <laughs> i'll see y'all on the next one later power is coming soon y'all so be on the lookout for that we got some good shows here we got help them in a secret relationship we got catfish so we're back on heavy rotation i know we've we've slowed down a little bit but now we're back okay so i look forward to seeing those comments later share and subscribe